My name's Sarah Curry. I teach painting, advanced painting, and portfolio here at Brush High School. It's a unique high school in that it feels more like an arts magnet. I'm Hadley Connor. I'm the photography art. teacher at Brush High School. Um, I teach three levels of photography currently, which is photo one, photo two, that are both semester classes, and I teach an AP photography. My name is, is Melissa Quinlan. I am a here. ceramics teacher at Brush High School. And it's very exciting to work in this art department. I'm April Lewis. Um, it's very I'm a teacher here at Brush. I teach drawing, drawing two, and ceramics. I have been here at Brush for 16 years. I'm Laura Mayer. I'm a 2000 graduate dying. from Brush High School, and then I came back here about five years ago to teach art. I um, graduated from Kent State University with I'm my art education Mark degree. Just recently I'm a teacher graduated. at Brush High School. I teach uh, video art. Um, video making, cinema, art history. My name is uh, Mr. Rick Etter, um, along with Mr. A... Mark Bellet, we are the instructors here at Brush High School, and we teach woodworking, we teach furniture making. My name is Mark we Bellet. Teach... I am the coordinator for the art and technology department here at Charles F. Brush High School. And here we have one of what I think is one of the better art departments you're going to find in our area. One of the best parts about teaching art is having a combination of students that are art bound in terms of college as well as those that are not thinking about it as a future because they balance one another and a lot of times the kids that are not going into art have an innocence that I think that the more experienced kids forget and so it's a constant reminder as to why they are doing art in the first place and why it's fun. Uh, they help each other in terms of collaborative projects such as murals, but finding the strengths and relying on themselves as well as being able to lean on one another offers something that I think is pretty unique to art as well. The Senior Art Show is probably the biggest event that we have here in the art department. Uh, it is an annual event that occurs usually at the very end of the year after spring break. And what the kids do is get together a culmination of all of their work. They are responsible for matting their own work, presenting it, uh, and displaying it to the public. And it involves everyone from the senior citizens that come in for a brunch that day, as well as parents, grandparents, friends, family, staff is involved. Uh, the kids this year sold quite a bit of their work to staff members in the community. We have members from the community come in and judge the work as well as attend the ceremony in which the students receive awards and they are given anything from most creative to favorite photo to student favorite. We let the kids vote as well so they've got their say. This becomes quite an emotional event for all of us. I think having seeing the kids go through four years of art classes and then watching their work. A lot of times they have two-dimensional work that I've never had a chance to see because they work in Miss Lewis's room or three-dimensional work, which are working with Miss Quinlan that I've never seen. And the kids and the teachers and the parents are all very emotional during the ceremony itself as they see all of their work and the pride that you can see in their faces as well as ours. This year, Brush High School received 29 awards at the Scholastics ceremony. We were honored by having quite a few gold medals, which is unusual. This covers our entire department, both three-dimensional and two-dimensional. One of the highlights for me was one of my students, Dan Taylor, received a gold key and was one of 500 pieces that was shipped to New York City that's now being exhibited downtown. This is my ninth year teaching at Brush and I had no idea I would love it as much as I do. The art room seems to be a safe haven for a lot of students here. Uh, I think that kids are able to express themselves in many ways, both verbally and visually. Um, but for me, it's a group environment that feels more like a studio, and I teach it like at a college level, where kids are able to have their own space, go back to this space, and there's an ownership in the room that I don't think you can get in most classrooms. It's not a traditional environment, but they help one another and are supportive of one another, and I think that that's also pretty specific to art.
Teaching at Brush is something that I've been looking for since I started teaching in public school. In other words, all the teachers at the school are certified K through 12. So we can teach every medium just about and every age level. But the unusual thing about Brush is that we are all able to be specialized in the sense that I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in photography from Cleveland Institute of Art. I went back to school to become certified to teach public school and I'm able to teach photography full time. Because we offer so many different courses at Brush, for instance, a student taking photography can take photography for three years, the photo one, two, and then the AP photography. If they're still interested in pursuing more of the same medium, they can take a class that's called Master Studio. So it's a class where they still have access to the facilities, they have access to me as an instructor, they're more independent. Usually these are students that are more driven, that are looking into it as a career, um, as either a minor or a major. Maybe they're going into an art school um, environment and so they're trying to build their portfolio to uh, gain all kinds of money for scholarships. There are a lot of different competitions in the area. Some of them are regional, some of them are national. Uh, one of the biggest is the Scholastics Arts and Writing Competition, which takes place on a local level. So it's Northeastern Ohio and all the schools that participate. And then those winners go to a national level in New York City um, for another judging. Uh, so we've done very well in the past with having students win in different uh, areas of this competition. I would say in the past three or four years we've been fortunate enough to have students that have gone on it to win gold and silver in the national level as well. Uh, one of my students that won uh, the gold key is uh, Shana Mel for a piece called Sunday's Dress which is a fabulous color image with part of her yellow dress up over her head so it's a whole play on identity. Um, and being self-conscious and being a certain age, being female, and it's, it's a great piece. So I was really thrilled to see that it won the gold key. Being able to take these classes at Brush has helped me really kind of solidify my dreams to be a fashion photographer. And the conversations I've had with Hadley and also the conversations I've had with my classmates who are also interested in photography has really helped me um, decide that human interaction is one of the most important parts of photography. I was able to build a foundation from my classes at Brush that I'm really confident to go to art school and to further my uh, degree in photography technically and creatively, work with new people and be able to reference back the great teachers that I had and interaction with my classmates and my friends and everything like that. So I'm really excited and I'm glad that I got such a good program. When I came to Brush High School, they didn't really have a ceramics program and I was able to write a curriculum and get it going off the ground. And here we are 10 years later, and now we have Ceramics 1, Ceramics 2, and Advanced Ceramics. We do um, mostly hand building in the Ceramics 1 and Ceramics 2 classes. Ceramics on the pottery wheel is a big focus for the advanced class, and the advanced class is also a full year. So the kids really get a chance to focus on their style and coming up with a body of work, a true body of work. The curriculum for ceramics is based off of a foundation of vocabulary. Um, we introduce every class with the same vocabulary. There are words um, that need to be understood across the board, techniques that need to be understood across the board. And from there, the, the higher level courses are for the kids to really start to get a feel for what they like. And you kind of start to see where each child, each student has their strength. And you kind of push them in that direction and get them to grow. Um, for example, I have a student in mind, David Anderson is a great example. He started in Ceramics 1, you know, learned the basics, the foundations of the class, moved on to Ceramics 2, and now as a senior he's in Advanced Ceramics and considering becoming an art teacher and going to Kent next year. Um, he's just really grown his pottery on the wheel. He's 
challenged himself and and the great thing about art is and, and especially David is he's not afraid of it you come back the next day and it's a whole new creative day um, you know he'll he'll experiment and try something on the wheel or with a glaze and then the next day um, you know try something completely different so it, overall this job for me I, and I tell the kids this at the beginning of the school year it, it's really my dream job I wake up I enjoy coming to work I love working with the kids I love the staff that I work with I love being in this environment with um, you know with the clay and the and the kilns and the you know the, just the the whole earthiness of it and it's helped me grow as um, as a teacher and as a mom and just as a person it's it's a it's a very exciting job where you have to be flexible you don't know what the day is going to be like and um, I think I, I I can't say enough about you know where I work and and what I do I really enjoy what I do I absolutely love teaching high school art. Teaching high school art to me, um, these students in the art classroom, it, it, it's almost like, it, it, here at Brush, we've changed it. It's almost like on a collegiate level. The, the kid, they're, when you do art in elementary school, to me, it feels more arts and, um, arts and crafts. So you're able to talk to the students like an adult, and they understand what you're talking about. And um, it's really exciting when they're able to take what your advice or your guidance and they produce something. And it really, it almost brings tears to your eyes sometimes when they produce something. It's just so overwhelming, um, the quality of work that the students are producing here in the art department at Brush High School. Sometimes it's really hard to see them walk across that stage at the end of the year because you can't imagine um, somebody coming in and replacing them. Um, you know, and, and for 16 years, you're talking about thousands of students that I've interacted with that um, that have. Uh, it, it's really hard to pinpoint one in particular that haven't um, it, haven't left some kind of impression on myself. Um, when I look back, um, it's just an unbelievable experience. It makes coming to work much easier when you have the support uh, of, a, of a strong department uh, that always have your back and um, are always very willing to work with you, whether it's with a student, whether it's with an idea. Um, the department here at Brush High School, anybody who in, in the future who has a chance to come in here and work here someday as people continue to uh, move on um, would, would not be disappointed. It has been quite a, uh, quite a rush, quite, quite a career rush. What I really enjoy about teaching in my classroom is to see the students get very excited about what they're doing. At first, it seems overwhelming when I take the first part of the semester, first part of the school year, to teach the students the software and explain kind of what we're doing here and show them a different field of art, different part of art, because people don't usually think of art on the computer. So when they start off, they're learning the software and it seems very overwhelming and I'm never going to get this. And then it's great to see in about three or four weeks how much the students have learned and how much there is to learn with the computer software. What's really exciting for me is to be able to teach here and get the support from our community and from our school district and from the other um, teachers here at Brush High School because we it's, it's really exciting to teach with these students and see what they come up with on a daily basis. What's really great about working with Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator is that it really gives students the opportunity to work with the things that they see every day, such as um, magazine layouts. We do um, different illustrations, and I try to t pick things from billboards and from TV and movies and try to teach them how to use it um, on their computers. And then we, we've got poster printers and we've got really nice paper, so what they can do is they make a really great idea and then get them together in a portfolio and they can show them to their colleges when they apply for different design programs or art programs and they've done really well because 
they not many high schools offer these programs. So when students think that they're interested in graphic design at some other high schools, maybe they don't have the experience that they get at Brush High School with actually using, utilizing the software and getting to experience what the things will really look like once they're off the computer or what the field will really hold for them as far as computer work because now graphic design or really anything that you get into requires a lot of graphics, a lot of computer work and so we're able to offer that here at Brush High School which is unique for any high school especially in um, the Northeast Ohio area. It's a great classroom because it's a very free, open classroom. It's teaching you how to use extremely useful skills. You're able to do anything you want. It's school appropriate, of course, but you have to keep within the restrictions. She just designs the project and lets you go. Some of my favorite things I got to do are the movie poster project where I got to make myself look ridiculous in a pixie costume. It allowed me to just open my mind and just be free. Then you also had the postcard project, which it lets you try and go somewhere where you've never really gone before and just explore your own self. Find what you really want to do. For my own part, I started out as a painter and that was kind of a halting education. Um, the first part of that, I think what really more informs what I do here is uh, philosophy. So my initial instinct for the class and one that I've tried to um, elaborate on as I do lesson plans is to have the students think about what they're watching. One of the things that occurs in the classroom that gets the kids really excited is when they are watching a film and they find it may be difficult to hear me talk about the film or you know, how the film is made. And then within a couple of months of cinema class, they'll come back in and say, you know, you've ruined films for me. I, <laughs> I can't watch films with my mom or dad anymore and, or just go to the theater or whatever and, and just sit there and watch them. I keep thinking about um, how the film is put together. I'm watching zooms. I'm looking for you know, color motifs. And uh, that, that's that's something good to hear because they're separated at least um, from the film and they can kind of think about it. It's another way to engage in art. Uh, for video making, the kids now that have maybe been in filmmaking um, can try and enact some of the things that they've learned. So they will go through writing a script um, you know, after initially brainstorming an idea, doing storyboards, um, shooting their film, and then editing their film and then finally you know putting a title to it and trying to in a way market their film come up with a style um, that's been successful at times at other times it's been successful in that it's been such a difficult struggle um, for some of the students to do and I think in that part is where a lot more of the education maybe the the part that's more rewarding for me comes in there is one other group of students that is uh, exciting to watch and work with and it's the people that may have had the class years previously, may have had the class now, maybe they're in art history or in cinema and they don't get to have a hands-on experience and they will come after school for a film club. This is unofficial, we don't actually have a film club but I don't mind spending the time together with them. And they will take out cameras and work on their own things. Um, I, when they come up with a self-generated idea and they have to put together a group of friends and schedule things on their own, that's interesting. Um, the students quickly mature and I don't know of uh, a lot of other processes that happen in my classes where I've seen a kid grow up so quickly as opposed to, you know, um, when they are asked to struggle so much and bring forth this, um, this energy that just, you know, has to manifest again and again day by day. Um, so when those students come to the forefront and to my attention and they meet each other, that's also been bringing about um, some interesting projects. The Woods Technology is a class where all the students learn how to make projects out of woodworking. And this would include the safe operation of uh, hand tools and uh, power tools. Now, in the Woods Tech class, we work with the students to make and learn how to do all these things. 
Once someone becomes proficient enough and they enjoy this kind of work, if they choose, they can take the furniture making class. Now the furniture making class is a yearly class, but you get to do a few more things. Now the understanding is that you took the woods class and you already have some basis of understanding of the tools and uh, you'll be surprised at what you can learn into, in addition to what you learn in the woods tech class. Now, the construction class and the maintenance class is a little different. You use most of the same tools, but you're doing a different thing. If you go home and you find that something doesn't work, the construction and maintenance class will probably touch base on how that is repaired. We go over basic wiring, we go over plumbing, we go over uh, how windows are fit, we go over roofing. Not so that you can make your own house, but you could make some simple repairs and probably save your parents a few bucks if you can in fact do that. And that goes with the floor and the basic understanding of how a residential uh, uh, house is uh, constructed. Most of the people who take these classes enjoy them. Most of the people who take these classes do well. I find that a student who attends the class and has few absences typically learns. And if you try, you'll learn. If you don't try, you won't learn. And I think that's applicable in any of the classes. These are the kind of classes that you might want to take and do well, and you can always learn from them. Sometimes I tell people, I teach math and I teach science. I just use woodworking as a method of doing it. Our students uh, within the department uh, come from a variety of different experiences and bring a lot of different things to the department and we in turn try to um, accommodate that with what we are offering to them uh, both in terms of the media they can work with and uh, the ways that they can individually choose to express themselves within those media and our students uh, do really well with that, um, both technically and artistically in the way they're able to put together uh, their work um, and also in the way that they are able to bring their experiences into what they're showing. On a typical year, we uh, have upwards of 1,600 students come through our art programs. And many of those are students who do repeat. They will start as freshmen or sophomores taking classes in a certain area and develop an affinity for it and uh, often will take um, advanced levels of those classes or move on to uh, other subjects within the department or other uh, media within the department. Our diversity and our ability to offer many things um, really wouldn't happen without the support that we get from uh, the administration here at the school for these and the, the uh, policies being made at the district level that really value the arts as a part of the overall education for a student and recognize that the way we are able to work with students and students are able to express themselves uh, with the type of work that we do really helps uh, them build themselves into much more rounded um, students who are then able to do better in their other classes because of the way they learn how to um, how to process and express themselves in, in this program. Um, I really enjoy my job here, um, uh, teaching in the art and technology department at Brush High School, um, because we, I enjoy the diversity of students that we get. I have students come to me with all different levels of experience, and every one of them is able to learn something and walk out of the class with a sense of accomplishment about something that they were able to do leaving the class that they weren't able to do walking into it. And that's what keeps me coming back every day.